Oh, no, so you say Neanderthals and humans never met. Well, let's get that right. Let's get it the way it should be. I'm saying that there's no objective evidence that humans and Neanderthals ever met. You know, let's do a little bit of history. Uh, ever since they found the first um, Neanderthal in the mid-19th century, there's been all kinds of theories thrown around of how the Neanderthals disappeared. And I'd say 90 to 99% of them have to do with humans. We either killed them off, uh, we outcompeted them, we were better at hunting or whatever, we had more children than they did. Um, and we, the, the latest one is that we intermarried with them, that we called it mixture. And that means that, you know, we mated with them and we, humans, are the offspring. We are the Neanderthals. <laughs> the Neanderthals never disappeared, they became us. Okay, that's the theory today, the, the reigning theory. Okay, and so the issue here is that because 90 to 99 percent of the theories always involved man, uh, they had to invent, uh, or, or what developed from there, was a competition for the last Neanderthal. They had to make sure that Neanderthal lived to a greater age, like to 30,000 years ago, and then humans came in to Europe earlier, like maybe 40,000 or 45,000 years ago. They had to make sure that humans had something to do with the disappearance of Neanderthals. Okay? And here you can see it from the papers themselves. Here's Finlayson, 1999. A middle Paleolithic industry was recovered associated with a hearth. So here it tells you how they figured this out. From which charcoal was dated to circa 32 to 33,000 years ago. Artifacts from these levels are of Musterian tradition. Musterian is the Neanderthal technology. So this guy is saying, okay, we found a Neanderthal and we dated him to 32 to 33,000 years ago, right? A couple months later, a few months later, uh, 2000, here we have Obchinikov, and he says, oh no, the last Neanderthal died in my turf. Radiocarbon dating estimated the specimen to be 29,000 years ago, and therefore from one of the last, the latest living Neanderthals. Okay. okay, so now he beat the other guy by 3,000 years. Okay, so now what happens? Uh, Richards comes, 2,000. Uh, the two Neanderthal specimens were dated to 29,000 years before the present and 28,000 years before the present, making them the youngest directly dated Neanderthal specimens in Europe. So now you beat them by 1,000 years, right? And then Finlay Sun comes back, 2006. Here we present data based on a high-resolution record of human occupation of Gorham's Cave, Gibraltar, that established the survival of a population of Neanderthals to 28,000 years before the present. These Neanderthals are the last currently recorded anywhere. That's always the punchline. Yeah, it's, it's a competition for who got the last Neanderthal. Okay. And they get their names and lights, and they get to do all these things. Yeah. Now, when through a bucket of cold ice, cold water, on the uh, uh, Neanderthal competition, on the last Neanderthal competition, was a study made by Tom Hyam. He's from, um, he's from the uh, uh, Carbon-14 uh, group lab that dates all kinds of findings, right? Uh, dates all kinds of samples and specimens uh, in Oxford. And he's considered a, an authority at least as far as Carbon-14 dating. And at least you can say, well, he's trying to be as consistent as possible across the board. So if he dates this 30,000 years, uh, more than likely when he uh, dates something else, it's going to be in reference to that. Whether you accept the absolute values or not, they're at least referenced to each other. Okay? And he says, we show that the Musterian, the technology that the Neanderthals had, we show that the Musterian ended by 41 to 39,000 calibrated years before the present across Europe. The last Neanderthals did not survive after 41,000 to 39,000 calibrated years before the present. So that means the Neanderthals, according to Tom Hyam and his group, died around, rounding off 40,000 years ago. So this threw a bucket of cold ice on uh, all these other claims that the Neanderthals survived to 30,000, 29, 28,000 years ago. Why does he have more authority? Than no, that? I'm not saying that he does. All I'm saying is that he's trusted, first of all, across the board. Second, he's got his readings referenced to 
his other reading. So they're all, he's consistent within himself. Okay. Okay? And this was a bucket of cold ice because all these people were claiming that Neanderthal survived to 30,000 years ago. This guy was saying, no, they died 10,000 years earlier. Now this created a problem for all the people who had uh, theories based on the fact that humans had something to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals. Because if humans did not appear, let's assume that, huh? if humans did not appear in Europe until, let's say, 35,000 years ago, and here the Neanderthals died 5,000 years earlier, we had nothing to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals. By a, this created a problem, that's all I'm saying. By appear in Europe, you mean that they came... Uh, the, supposedly, the, the, the general theory is that humans migrated out of Africa and they went north to Europe, but they entered Europe around 35,000 years ago. Or we're, we're going to make that assumption. Let's assume that humans did come into Europe no earlier than 35,000 years ago. If the Neanderthals died 40,000 years ago, they never met. And humans had nothing to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals. But here you have the uh, case, it's Trinkos 2003, directly accelerated mass spectrometry radiocarbon, C14, right, dated to 34,000 to 36,000 uh, years before the present. The OACE 1 mandible is the oldest definite early modern human specimen in Europe. So, according to this reading, if we're going to look at objective data, if there's anything like it, if we can even imagine that. The closest thing to it. The closest thing to it. The first human enters, that we found so far, right, that we found so far, enters Europe 35,000 years ago, and the uh, last Neanderthal died 40,000 years ago, according to this group's readings. And, and they're trusted, and a lot of them are accepted widely by the paleontology, you know, uh, guild, the, mm -hmm. the people in paleontology. So what happened next? Well, they went from the, <laughs> since they, they had a problem there, they said, well, hold it, if the first human entered 5,000 years after the Neanderthals died, well, you know, maybe humans had nothing to do with the Neanderthal. We can't believe that because 90 to 99 percent of our theories, of our beliefs, are that humans did cause the extinction of the Neanderthals one way or another. Why do they cling so much on the humans? Being because they extinct? can't figure out any other reason oh, okay. how the Neanderthals could have died all by themselves. Okay. And so, so what happened was a new competition developed. <laughs> and uh, this is, this is redating or reclassifying human specimens, uh, uh, I mean, Neanderthal specimens, and they're reclassifying them as humans. What? Wait. Yeah. They, they, have, they have Neanderthal bones and they're calling them humans? More or less, that's essentially what they're doing. They, they, have, they don't have a whole head because that would be too oh, obvious. Yeah. But if they have one tooth, <laughs> and they say, well, this tooth really did not belong to Neanderthal, it, it was really human, and it's dated to 45,000 years ago, now we can see how they, you know, they met and they mingled and they did all their stuff. So now they're redating, or, or either redating or reclassifying. So this bone <laughs> is 40,000 years ago, and instead of calling it a Neanderthal bone 40,000 years ago, they're calling it a human, it's a 40,000 year old human bone. You got it. Okay. That, that's what they're doing. And here we have a, a, a case, it's uh, also from Hyams Group, he says KC4, that's uh, Kent Cavern 4, number 4, dates to 44,000 to 41,000 years before the present. Where is Kent Cavern? Uh, that's in England, right? This makes it older than any other equivalently dated modern human specimen. Okay? That's what he says in his report. But he adds something which shows you how they're playing around with this. We also show that in 13 dental traits, KC4, Ken Cavern 4, possesses modern human rather than Neanderthal characteristics. Three other traits show Neanderthal affinities, and a further seven are, un are ambiguous. So they don't know what they have. They don't know what they have, but they want to consider it a human because that way they can show that, ah, see, humans were in England you know, what is it, uh, 44,000 years before the present, so they had 4,000 years until the Neanderthal disappeared to mingle and uh, meet and mingle. Yep. And here's another example of the same thing, uh, Benazzi 2011. Here we reanalyze the deciduous molars, right, from the Grotta del Cavallo. Originally classified as Neanderthal, 
we show that the cavallo specimens can be attributed to anatomically modern humans. The teeth must date to 45,000 to 43,000 calendar years before the present. So now they're taking all these uh, Neanderthal bones, calling them humans, and they see, uh, you know, these people were, humans were in Europe 45,000 years before the present. Neanderthals died 40,000 years because everybody's now accepting more or less Tom Hyams' group uh, uh, findings. And they say, see, there are 5,000 years where we mixed and mingled. The issue is that all the theories that are based on humans having something to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals are based on, you know, the two species having met, to, and, you know, and, and encountered At each other. At the very least being in the same time period. Right. And, we, and, and all I'm saying is there's no objective evidence right now that they were at the same place at the same time anywhere. You know, we don't have objective evidence for this. That's the first point. So any theory based on humans having something to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals is uh, you cannot take for granted the assumption that we even met. That's the first one. And the second one is that, yeah, there, there's a lot of playing around with the dates and the samples because people have, they already made up their minds exactly. of, of what they want to prove. And now they're just modifying the data, they're playing around with the data to make it fit their preconceived, you know, conclusion. They're Uga. So, what do you think we should do with the admixture theorists? Well, let me tell you what I think. Kawabanga!